Welcome to another edition of UFO Encounters and Cryptid Phenomenon with Russ and Grizzly. Hello there, Denise. Welcome. Hello, everybody. How you doing, Russ? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Not too bad. It's been a bit of a strange uh, weekend, really. It has it. Uh, I love your videos you were showing me uh, before the show and... Uh, you know, uh, a couple of days ago and last night. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, well, um, to, be, to be quite honest, um, I'd, I'd sent them across, but um, I had them on, I've got them on this other uh, computer, um, which I've tried to use. And when I've come upstairs, because I don't use it up here, I've realized it doesn't have one of these um, cables, um, you know, F, Fnet cables you know like um, right. it's not good at getting the wi-fi up here um just i'll tell you what i want to do right yeah so i'm going to do um whilst we're talking um what happened was um the the other night when i was out um what was it now it must have been uh, Saturday. Hey, roger everybody welcome to the show uh, Saturday night, I think it was, uh, when I'd uh, been out. And, um, you know, sort of like it was early, you know, morning sort of thing. And uh, to, to cut a long story short, there'd been this light above the house, uh, the row of houses. And I was looking at it and I'm thinking, right, um, we've got the moon over in the east. And it's north, northeast, so it's not the moon. I'm thinking, what's that bright light, you know, behind it? You could see it coming across, you know, like above the house tops. And so I'm in round the patio at the, the back of the house sort of thing. And what I do is I, I take me, um, my mobile and it's got this app on which... I showed you earlier, which is um, my camera, you, you know, um, security camera, for want of a better name. But right. Obviously, um, for UFOs, you know, sort of like, uh, because not getting out as much as I used to with me walking. Bit of a lazy man's way of doing things. So in comfort of your, your own home, basically, what, what, you, what you can do, is um sit and uh press record or you can have it um a timer right so i'll press it you know sort of like around about maybe 12 o'clock or 11 and, and then sort of like have a look at three in the morning or put it on at one you know de depending on what i'm doing so i've already switched it on and gone outside and i can see something in the sky is my sound too loud on there, by the way? No. Mm -mm. Uh, right. So uh, when I go out, I've got it full. I'll, right. Turn it down. Right. Because it's echoing a bit. So when I uh, went outside, I uh, noticed, you know, in the sky, something appearing. And it wasn't 100% clear, um, but it was clear enough. So I had a, quite a bit of pain, and I thought, you know what? I'll just get my camera and have a look to see if it's picking up the same things, you know, on the um, my Sony uh, Andy cam what I've got. I charged it up, and all of a sudden, it just went dead. Now, the thing is, I didn't have a lot of power in it, so I aren't saying it was zapped or anything. I thought, oh, right, I should have left it on a bit longer. So this is this is what it's like, and this is now. This is live now. Okay. So, um, so what I'm doing is I'm thinking to myself, quite a bit of pain. I need the painkiller. You know what I mean? So I goes in to um, to the front room. And sat down where Patio is, 
and I'm looking and I'm thinking, you know, there's there's a lot of activity out there up in the sky. So I'm looking at it, you know, and I'm like this looking. I'm taking a tablet and sort of like an early joke because the next thing is like there's this like a flash and around the the camera there's like this there's this like light around the camera on the right hand side or you know like here right and then all of a sudden it toodles across to the other side where this big light is what i've been looking at and i'm thinking that's a bit strange so i'm thinking right i'm i'm going to go now and i'm what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to go and have a look out at patio instead because big patio door and i'm so i'm looking and i'm not really seeing anything so i thought to myself i'll put the camera on charge so i went and put the camera on charge to go back to the patio and i sat down and the next thing the same thing happens again and this time there's like a bird flying and it, it sort of like it, it looks like it nearly eats a bird and it zaps down and this time the light is at the left hand side and it moves to the right hand side so my sister said you know sort of like what are you what are you sat with your mouth open for like that and i says um you know, I'm sort of like looking at something. I, I don't know what I'm looking at. You know, I says, I can't figure this out. And then the, all of a sudden, there's other things going on, you know, sort of like lights and, and what have you. So, you, you know, sort of like, I just could not believe it. But the problem was, I'd taken painkillers and I really was not well. You know what I mean? Sort of like, and uh, by this time, it's it's quite late you know what i mean it's quite late in the morning like uh five o'clock you know what i mean sort of like right so i, I basically contacted you and said i'm sending sending you over um, yeah it was late see i mean i've got it on now this is happening now can you see right this isn't happening now yeah yeah uh, I don't know if you can see how it's happening, but um, I've just been watching as as we're talking. There's things moving around and and shooting down. I don't know. It'll just probably be one of those things. No, it'll happen now. I've brought it up here. But you are in a bed of hot spots over there, and you okay for for UFOs? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on record now. Right, I'm recording that now. I've just I've just turned record on. So yeah, um see what happens. That's right, yeah. This area I, I came round here in nineteen ninety, I think it was ninety-seven. I came around on an investigation and we went from Hull and came up to Bridlington and up to Filey in Scarborough and we were meeting people and they were telling us you know sort of like uh, what they'd uh, what they'd seen you know and round here we've got a place I think I told you the place called Flixton uh, Flixton Werewolf. Now over at the over in the corner, um, there's uh, the Flambra Lighthouse and Bridlington, and there's um, a place a place well known. A lot of people know about it. Uh, I was first introduced to that um, quite a few years ago, back in I think it was back in 1990, uh, about 98, and we went over there filming. And there's also 
area filey and abandoned some people call it filey you know some other people call it other, other names and what have you but a lot of people around here remember it as uh rf uh, filey and right. there's all sorts of strange things gone on there i think somebody were found in a car uh dead or some something and there's people go missing and it's it's not somewhere where you want to go i've been and i i didn't like it so there's that area um, and just around, there's a place called Dane's Dyke, um, and it's like, a, a, what do you call it, uh, like Stone Age works and, and what have you, um, you know, with mounds and what have you. And just near there, there's, there's also a, um, a, a chap filmed some, uh, saw something, sorry, and he drew it, and he was in the paper years ago, back in, I think it was 1990, and he saw this creature. Uh, you need to speak to him, on, on get him on your show, actually. He's, he, he's, he drew this, uh, like, dogman, right? Wow. Um, I had him on my Facebook, and I'd lost a lot of people. Uh, I don't know what's happened. Then all of a sudden, 500 people just appeared that I didn't even know. Facebook yeah, we were talking about people. that the other day, you remember? Yeah, and sort of like when other people have said, yeah, they've done that to me. Anyway, so the thing is, I'm trying to get him back because I've reached my limit, so I'm having to get rid of people, some people I've never even seen, to, to get him back on anyway. So what happens is he's seen this near this fence and he's drawn it. It's an amazing drawing. Uh, I've got it somewhere from the paper, but I can't show you because it's it's a, the, the chaps, you know what I mean? Anyway, so the thing is, also around that area, we've had um, Captain Schaffner, I was talking about the jet, the, <clears throat> the jet, and they were chasing a UFO, and it landed not far from there in the North Sea. And when they pulled the jet out of the sea, the uh, canopy hadn't been moved. It hadn't been turned back or anything, you know, like a moved back. The seat was still intact. And so were the rig, you know, like um, for the ejector seat and everything. Everything right. was intact. He hadn't hit it to, to open. You know what I mean? It was all intact. So where it wasn't, it was nowhere to be seen. They never found him. Really? And uh, that's 1970. You can have a look. You, you can put um, um, jet fight, jet fighter, lightning fighter, 1970, chases UFO, um, find jet in North Sea near Flamborough or Bridlington. Well known. It's a well well known case. I was looking at that years ago. Um, so that happened, and I can see over that area where the lighthouse is. Now, I'm filming things around near there. I'm think, um, videoing things a bit uh, closer to my home, um, which is like uh, due um, east. I'm filming stuff over at um, the, there's a place called Filey Brig, and I I actually filmed something like a dolphin, right? Yeah. So this right. this object, I'm saying, oh, it's a balloon. It's got to be a balloon. Yeah. And I'm looking, and I'm zooming in and panning back, and sort of like zooming in, and, and I'm thinking, and it's a it's a pretty good zoom on the the camera because it's got a two times magnification. So that means. It's a um, hundred and fifty times, so times by two, so you've got three hundred zoom, and it's optical zoom, not digital zoom, right? right? So you can you can you know I mean zoom in pretty damn close to 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 objects, right? So I'm zooming in, not going too close because it gets blurred, obviously, and. Um, I'm looking and I'm thinking, there should be a tether 
right? You should see a tether underneath it. And I'm looking at the people on the ground, right, yeah? Uh, we can't send things. And I'm looking and there's nobody directly underneath it holding it. There's nobody to the sides holding it, you know, like if it's uh, moving with the wind. It doesn't appear to be moving with it, the wind because it's static, but it's moving around and it appears to be looking around it all the way around. Wow. So, you know, so I'm thinking to myself, so there's that. Then uh, me and Joe, we were out um, and at the bandstand and we both got cameras. We both got the same camera, more or less, a uh, Sony night vision. Am I allowed to say that anyway? Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> Adver advertising. So we both got with night vision, with night shot. And um, so we're both filming the same thing. And this object's moving from, I think it was right to left, and then all of a sudden it stops and reverses. And then it comes forward over us, and then there's no sound. You can hear we're talking, so you can hear us talking. Now, are these the flying triangles that you've gotten, or no, these are different? This ones? is this is another another uh, time. Now, when we were looking at the objects, there were like two diffused lights. Yeah, they were just dull lights. Um, now the thing is, when you look through the vid, when you're looking through uh, the video, you know, at these, you can see a, like there is a slight reddish color and a green color, or very slight. And I'm saying, oh, it's got to be a plane, that's because it's port and starboard, red and green. Port is red and starboard is green, so. But the thing is, there is nothing in between the lights. There's nothing. There's no wings. There's no fuselage. And when it comes over, overhead, you can actually see the stars. You can see it going past and you see stars going through it. Not a lot of them, but I think there's one or two stars that you just see go through. So you can clearly see that it's like there's nothing there that's invisible in the in the middle you know sort of like if there's anything if it's attached you know you're not seeing it or as people you know there's this terminology i don't like using it i never have done but they say oh it's cloaking you know what i mean um these things cloak and they can put a an image outside around so you just sit well the thing is it's in the middle so you're defeating the object in in a way i suppose you, you know what i mean so there's that so we've got that we've got the dolphin uh then i've been out um, with a, a couple of people now when you say dolphin the, explain to everybody what that what, what you're referring to to the to the doll um right there were the dolphin which the first one and that's at Filey Brig right yeah uh, and and like I said that that were a different time you know in the summer does it look it's like the, a dolphin in the sky or yeah yeah that that was the the first one of the first you know sort of like I filmed over at Filey Brig. So I'm at the bandstand filming that over at Filey Brig, right? Right. Um, where it, it's uh, there used to be like um, all these Roman towers around here, you know, like to to warm, you know, like further down the coast, you know, like the other Romans and and inland, you know. And there's one just outside of my house in in the uh, park. We've got one of these. There's like four big um stones where, where they must have had wood you know like in them you know for where they climbed up into these big towers you know um so the second one i was talking about is 
I call it Tom and Judy because it's like two lights and they're always together. These lights are always together. There's always two of them. Right, yeah? And usually they're just balls of light. You know, um, bright balls of light. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, they can be dim, but they're always together. So I, I just coined the phrase, you know, it's Tom and Jerry again. Tom and Jerry's back, you know. So then I went, uh, I, I was at the bandstand, and then I, I walked across uh, to the where there's a golf, um, a, put, a little putting, you know, green and what have you, uh, at the other side of, of Filey at this um, park. So I was sat across there, and looking down, you can see there's like a little swimming pool. It's been in the pit. In fact, it's I don't know if I'm allowed to show it, but it's in the paper. And you can see the swimming pool. And you can see the actual front of, um, you know, like Filey, you know, like uh, the prom sort of thing. Um, and at the other side, there is the lighthouse at Flamborough. So I'm sat here and I'm I'm seeing all this around me. When I see uh, originally there were one ball of light, and then there were two balls, and then there were like six. And what it was were two flying triangles that were in last week's paper. I think that were in um, the one. There's a video of that in last week's um, paper. And that is the flying triangles coming out of um, Filey Bay. So the thing is, I'm saying, is this, someone said about um, um, B2, uh, no, yeah, B2 bombers that they can stop. Someone was saying, I heard him saying this, um, and he was saying that they can do all sorts, they can stop and, and do all sorts. And this is a bomber, and I'm thinking a bit big, really, for bombers to be hovering. You know what I mean? Right. So when I'm filming, I'm saying, is it a B-52? Is, is it a bomber? You know, and I'm meaning, is it a B-2 bomber? And I'm, I'm looking, and I'm taking my eyes off the ball because there's things shooting down at this object, right? And this object was in the sea, and now it's in the sky. And there's these things coming down and shooting, like just like balls of light coming down. And now, when I when I when I pan back out, I can see that that object is like two objects now, together, side by side. And eventually. When it goes down towards where the plane crashed, towards um, the the lighthouse, Flamborough and Bridlington going down the coast, it looks like two crosses in the sky. Right? It looks like two crosses. Well, I had every when it went in the paper, I had everybody that were telling me, um, "Oh, look." Um, I know what it was. I, I can tell you now, nothing to get worried about. It was um, an aeroplane refueling. And I said, well, the problem with that is, right, to refuel an aeroplane because they use gravity fed, right? So you've got to be above the objects. He's looking at an image and the side by side. I have never seen any aircraft yeah being fed fuels fuels you know um what do you call it fuel right aviation fuel side by side no it's never side by side it's always behind ne never seen and it's always above because it has to it's gravity fed and it comes it runs down because they can see the nozzle going to the, the top Right, the filling point, right? So I'm saying, well, no, because you've got to be able to see clearly where the nozzle's going in to the back of the, the aircraft to the to the um fuel tank where the, the nozzle goes in to refuel. 
you know, by that line, you know, sort of like, oh, uh, no, you're wrong. I said, no, I'm not wrong. I said, I can guarantee I'm not wrong. Well, what do you know anyway? You'd be surprised. So that was one idea, shut down straight away about this, you know, silly business about, uh, you know, sort of like fueling, you know, sort of like um, whilst, you know, it's, it's flying. Um, just like, and this is, this is the funniest one of all, when we were in the paper asking, did anybody see this dolphin? And I had, I think it was um, three people rung up, right? Yeah, all and uh, claiming that it were them that were flying a dolphin-shaped balloon, alien balloon. Really? And I'm saying, really, yeah. I went and asked that on the day if anybody, you know, had any dolphin-shaped balloons around here for sale. No, we haven't got any of them. Oh, right, okay. So a couple of days later, it went in the paper and uh, my telephone number were in. And so I had people ringing us up and I'm saying, all oh, right, I'd be interested to hear this because I realised, you know, that there's no tether on this thing and it's just looking around. It is just looking around. It stayed there for ages looking around. Like Instead scouting. of going straight up, alien balloons go straight up. You like know, it was scouting. And, yeah, exactly. You just hit the nail on the head there. So the thing is, one one it was a woman at rung and she says, Oh, you know, it was me. I, oh, what colour was it? I asked her. And oh, oh, um, and then in the background you can hear this bloke shout, ask him what colour it was. You know what I mean? And uh, she goes, Oh, oh, what colour was it? I says, uh, bright blue um pink with yellow spots. You know, sorry, I says, I don't think it was you. Bye. In other words, I was taking, they're ringing up, you know, being silly. You know, I can be. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a very straight, you know, it was a very strange colour, to be quite honest. Um, and with the cloud, it, it seemed to, to sort of like change colour. Anyway, so then we had somebody else and the very same thing happened again you know i asked him what color it was you know uh, and then bloke uh, oh what color was it that you saw what color was it what you i said i didn't see it i said i saw it and filmed it i says are you referring to the one i said that i videoed oh yes of course i mean that and i said well what color oh i've asked first i said what i said are you some kind of child i asked first i says you should know what colour it was. I said, if you had it and you were there, you know, sort of like, what kind of tether did you have? Put the phone down. You know, sort of like, I don't know whether these people want to try to be clever, you know, sort of like, or what, you know. But we had, we used to have this um, Wally of the Month for all the Wallies that rung up and we used to pick the best one. You know, sort of like it was, you know, like messing about and oh, go on, let's have Wally. They, they think they're taking the Mickey out of us, but believe me, we're sat listening to people trying to take a rise and we sort of like. But anyway, so the thing is, you know, uh, no tether, uh, people claiming, you know, it was them, they didn't even know what color the object was, what there was flying. You know, you get this. Um, like I say, the the one the one thing that I, I, I when I look, and I'm I'm saying to myself, you know, it's got you know, this has got to be a, a, a bomber, and I'm thinking to myself, what are you talking about? It's it had been and gone. Any type of aircraft, they wouldn't be hanging around. What's the what's the stall speed? For a normal aircraft, you know Golly, what I mean, right? Right. E you know, even your biplanes and your single prop planes, and they they don't stick around. Forty mile an hour at least. You know what I mean? Um, and that's just the stall speed. That you know that means it's in danger and it's it might glide. 
But when you're talking about something like these things that are in the sea one minute and taking off and, you know, and travelling, it's like, wow. You know, but the, the funny thing is about um, the, the two flying triangles as well is that I was filming, I think it's 20 minutes long, um, and that's when I was just going back. I'm just saying I'm, I'm packing up and going in now when I noticed it, and I'm thinking, because you do see fishermen out there, and you see boys as well with lights flashing, and I could see some of them. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, you know, is that a, one of the boys? It's a bit close there because I don't usually see, because you, you get accustomed to seeing the sea, at least I used to back then. So I'm thinking to myself, two things. You can see it right next to the road when I first start filming. You can see the object. It's only small and it's a little light. It becomes two and then becomes six right next to the road. So the thing is, why was there no sound? Right. There's got to be some kind of sound. You know? Right. Um, I, uh, um, now, the other thing is this. As, I mean, I'm not 100%, but I was told this by somebody. It says, problem is, Russ, with anything that's submerged, it's very hard for submerged objects. Like he said, basically, it's like a submarine being able to take off and fly. You know what I mean? How hard would it be? You know what I mean? You've got a submerged object, but yeah, it, it's it's capable of being in the water, but yeah, it's taken off and it, it, it's flown. And I'm saying it, it's flown as good as it's been in the sea. Now there's two there's two questions. And the first is, is it in the sea because it had problems or are they both in the sea because one were trying to retrieve the other, right? Had they, had they come down, in, you know, somewhere else and taken off? So that's one thing. Was it, was it an accident? You know, so is that why that there was there or is it because out over there we've got a massive area called dogger bank and the they think it's where um a meteor it it's you know a massive big um all in the sea's floor and i i don't know whether um that they've had any anything down there at the bottom it's that you know deep right question is could there be an under sea base there well see and now if we look at history uh even the sailors uh they've seen lights you know in the ocean for hundreds of years Oh, yeah. And scientists blame plankton, that bioluminous plankton, you yeah. know, they they blame that. But, you know, I think even Christopher Columbus saw lights. Uh, Lewis and Clark, and don't quote me on that, but I thought he saw lights uh, underneath the uh, ocean or in the ocean, too. So, That's I mean, this right. phenomenon has been going on for for a long time. So, That's, you know, the theory is, is you're right that there are probably underground bases. But I've had people that uh, have contacted me. Like I said, I used to have outline, you know, sort of like uh, we're on, on, on my car at one time, you know, and you could phone up, have you seen a UFO? And, uh, you know, sort of like, yeah, anyway, but you would get people that would have seen or know something or they'd taken the number down and passed it on to somebody else and said, 
you need to talk to this guy you know what i mean now at the moment i'm dealing with two people uh one that were a witness when this happened and he's getting on he's really getting on now as a, an old fisherman um but you know the thing is i'll tell you now some of these fishermen and and this is from uh, one of the guys that uh, have been brought up around here that do not like talking about these things now yeah and do you know why yeah it's a bad mojo you've just hit it you just hit it on the you've just hit it on the head yeah one it turned around and this is um, going back some time now um and um in fact, there were two of them, and they'd said to me that uh, they'd seen something, and they said they were fishing. Just carry on. Don't talk about it. Don't look. And it was a young lad that had just started with them. He says, and but, he said, there's no buts. He said, you can pack up, and you can go home, and stay home, he says, if you want to be talking about anything silly. And, oh. So he never spoke. He said, I never spoke about it. He said, because he says, I was young. I had um, a, a child, you know, sort of like, uh, I think a, a child don't weigh anyway, I think it was, if I remember right. And he said that, you know, like you, you, you've got to bring your, your family up and, you, 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 you know, you've got a job. And jobs were scarce, you know, started getting a little bit scarce, you know. So you don't say anything. He said, so I didn't say anything. You know. Now, Roger makes a, makes a good point. And I really didn't think about this until he, I just read this. And, uh, and the reason why I read comments, ladies and gentlemen, is for the audio people for the next day. It says, I wonder if aliens could possibly be making contact with other life on Earth besides man, like dolphin, whales, or other primates and apes. Now, with that being said, why is it they are finding sperm whales in the middle of the Amazon jungle? Mm. So why this, is that? This is a big question. I mean, I, I don't think man's doing it. Why are they finding wells in land? Well, the thing is, uh, you know, it's, it's we, we've heard of this uh, on a couple of occasions where, especially when there's been, you know, when there's been crop circles. And um, I, it's funny. This is when I was crop circling, by the way. We are just talking about this earlier on. Um, this is some time ago now. And there were some things found, not that one actually, when I think about it, um, there'd been some things found around these crop circles that shouldn't have been there. And guess what one of them was? A whale. Really? Yeah. This is this is going on. You just I was just looking at this the other day and I was going through. Um you know, we, we, we're talking about um, flipping egg. We, we're talking Look, over 20, says, even Samantha 20 years. Samantha Star Trek saved the whales. And I think that was the series, too. It, it or, was. Yeah. I think we really need to, to save the humans at the moment. <laughs> um, you know, because... Um, there was something else as well. There was, there was something else bizarre um, where some some animal, and I'm trying to think, my memory is not as good as it used to be, and there was a whale found um, near a crop circle, but then there, there were other things that had been found as well. What, now, a whale's what, 20, 30 tons? I don't think it was a massive, it wasn't one of the, you know, blue whales or anything like but it would have nevertheless it was a whale and um i'm just trying to think there was something 
where that someone said there'd been a monkey, um, a, a hip or something that had been seen and found near um, a crop circle years ago. You know what I mean? This is this is going back now some time. I'll have to have a look because I'll have to have a look in these files and go through. I've got that much stuff in these files. But um yeah, I mean the, the person were right had said that, you know. Could they be contacting, you know, sort of like animal species as well as humans? You know, um, and again we, we, we come into that big question, which is is um you know look at the cryptozoology part with bigfoot is bigfoot is it more alien is it something like uh, the missing link or is it something spiritual you know sort of like um you, you know it's it's like just what you know um just what is but there's links, you know. I mean, I've been watching programs, and you can see things above the trees, and you can see things through the trees, and they must be in the sky to see them, you know. And you know, they're sort of like going in and out of view, but uh, through the the you know gaps in the trees and what have you. So the and the the elevated eye, so they must be in the sky. And then all of a sudden, then they're down at ground level. So we're looking at the UFO aspect, you know, to, you know, to like uh, these stories, you know, where uh, things have been seen. And some of them have been seen right next to, you know, sort of like Bigfoot. And then we're talking about, there's there's a few different types here, and I was going to say on the, on the the show the other night, but I was just I was just enthralled by the show the other night. Um, I would just want to listen and and but we we're talking about um, shadow people, shadow beings, right? Right. right. Which I know that the technology what we use is basically teleportation slows us down. We can walk through solid objects, but they were talking about the other thing, which is the glimmer man. Right. Now, I think personally that the glimmer man is an, another race of aliens technology of doing the same thing, of using this teleportation. I think it's a different, you know, like it's a different form. Of tele, you know, like different models of cars. I've, you know what I mean. I, I think yeah, it's something. What wasn't it Star Trek? It looked like glitter when they teleported. Yes. Yeah. Um. Some other people see different things. If it isn't glitter, right? Yeah. Um. Shadows. Sometimes it is something like swirly. You know, like um. It's like smoke. I don't know. Is that the best? You could call it smoke, or you could say it's like looking into um, a black, um, a black bowl. You know, like uh, with water in it. And if you if you if you tap it, you'll you'll get the movement. You know, the ripples and everything. Right. So it could also there's you know like a possibility that there is that form of technology as well for another alien races, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, teleportation system. But well, you across, know, a lot of well, people say that, and then and they see like the mirage, or they see like the like the movie The Predator, right? They 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 see like the outline, but it's like a mirror. It, so. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've seen a video that looked like something that's cloaked like the Predator, and that scared yeah. the hell out of me. And that was Barb Sheep's video. Yes, I, I know what you're saying. 
I know what you're saying. Um, the other thing it, as well, what we were talking about, and um, uh, in some of these areas, I was saying um, there were big cats. You know, we're talking uh, the the other week about um, big cats in some areas where we've had uh, lots of UFOs. Sometimes we've had UFOs. There's been reports of um, crop circles, not big crop circles, small crop circles, right? And right. We've, had, we've had UFOs, crop circles, and we've had big cats. Then, all of a sudden, we start getting people talking and telling us, did they tell you about what else had got? No. What have they got? And they said, well, there's been a lot of dead cows, um, bulls, and sheep. Yeah? Now, the thing is, it's like I'd explained to me, and it was as, as simple as this, and that is farmers, you know, uh, not wanting to talk about any of this thing, uh, these things, because obviously they'd gone through a heck of a lot of problems with, you know, like the, the what do you call it, uh, mad cow, bovine and all this lot, you know, problem, right? So they're not happy that people are trampling around and going near, you know, looking, looking for either crop circles or looking for um, big cats or looking for dead sheep cattle, right? Yeah, they, they don't want the attention because they don't want everybody over on their property destroying exactly. their crops. Yeah. And exactly. So, yeah. They, so they try to keep it hush hush. Yeah. And and then, you know, and then you got these IGMOs that are trying to re recreate this, you know, phenomenon. But now, and I'll be, I'll be truthful, you know, some of them, yes, you know, I, I've seen the videos where they got the college students and people out there with the coat hangers around their head and the little thing and they focus on the light in the distance and the two by four i get that but some of these are so intricate there's no way you can recreate those oh well i can tell you now yeah um they're very good at what they do and i've, I've seen them um you know like uh, i've seen videos of them um, doing this uh with the planks of wood and what have you but when you've got you know something like a, a, a thousand feet long you know sort of like um crop circle that's so long and intricate and it's been done what over a few hours in the night and the next day when people have got up to there there's no way you'd have to have an army of people out there, right? Yeah. Um, now I've, I've seen people saying that they can coordinate and they, they can do things, um, you know, with night vision and what have you. But the problem is, and this is a big problem, when you get more people, you know, you start um, treading down areas and what have you. Now, I've heard them say, no, because we only use one walkway and all this lot and what have you. There's always somebody, you know, <laughs> there's always somebody that forgets and are walking, you know what I mean? The yeah, two, but see, the one big. thing you, you cannot fake with the crop circles is how they burst from the, the inside box. out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's and, right, yeah. And, in the i don't know what the term is and uh agent smith samantha or somebody there is some kind of electronic or some kind of radiation that makes it burst yeah it's, and it's um, not snapped like where you no, step it on yeah um oh what they call it now it's like um it's like it, it goes like a pod yes it, it goes like a pod and um, it hasn't been bent, but it, it looks like it's been done by some kind of radio wave. Right, like heat or something. Yeah, yeah. 
So, um, the, the, basically just fallen down rather than being bent down. They're just, right. you know, with, it, with these waves. And um, so, you know, nobody wants to talk about it because, you know, basically they can shut your farm down and you've lost money. Yeah, you, you, You've lost your way of life and, and what have you, you know. So there's that aspect. But like I say, there's all sorts of other things coming into it when, you know, there's big cats being seen and there's wolf men, dog men, Bigfoot being seen. Now, um, I know that there's uh, the place in Midlands near Birmingham, um, Cannock Chase, another famous place, you know, for these creatures. You know, sort of like people claim to have seen Bigfoots, um, dog men, and children with black eyes, you know, sort of like in this and area. That's one thing I do not want to see is children with black eyes. I don't want to see anything with black eyes. So, I mean, but uh, again, um, you know, sort of like I've never come across, you know, because it's a, away from me. You know, sort of like uh, I've never been there, but it's fascinating place. Then we go to the Loch Ness monster. You know, sort of like, and people say, "Oh well, yeah, well, you know." Just because one person has faked something, you know, sort of like a picture once, doesn't mean to say everything is faked. And it's a legend anyway. It goes back. You know? So oh, yeah, like, yeah. That, that, now, I do agree with you that the guy did. I can't think of his name. And whoever's out there that wants to say his name, that's fine by me, because I don't remember his name. They took the picture of the submarine with the dinosaur head. That Yeah, that was a fake picture. Yeah. You know, because he wanted to make money. Now, did the phenomenon exist prior to that? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It went back yeah. hundreds and hundreds of years. It was that, um, uh, oh, now then, um, just think, what they got, Saint, somebody, Saint... Oh. So I'm going to show everybody my UFO fidget spinner I always play with during the show. I was showing Russ during the show. It's my UFO fidget. It's a fidget spinner I I play with during the show. I'm just trying to think of his name now. Hey, I've Gary. Welcome to the show. But, Gary, <laughs> what's the guy that's named that faked the uh, uh, Loch Ness Monster picture? Or Roger or Samantha. You know, if you had never brought that up, I would have told you who it was. You know, I'm getting the same, honestly. But yeah, well, we all know it's fake, you know, and that is the famous picture. Yeah, that is only one. I mean, there's other people that are seeing these things and, and taking pictures now. But you um, remember the famous picture of the underwater? Yeah. Uh do you like that? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's a it's a not and and, and it glows. It, it it glows. Uh it it's pretty neat. And, and I do play with it. So but I am now the other thing I play with, well, I don't really try to play with it's my little tinge unit for my bike. So oh no. So if you ever see me mess with something, I'm adjusting the strength. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, the, the have shopping. you ever turned it up by accident? Have you ever yeah, turned it up? Have you ever seen me go, yeah? Oh, um, yeah, that that that's what happened. I've got but mine next door, and I, I tried Robert Wilson, home. yes, Robert Wilson took the famous. Thank you. I knew that's I thought cool. it was Robert, but I couldn't, I wasn't for sure. Thank you. But now, there was a scientist that took that underwater picture. Um, dang, I don't know, was it back in the 80s or 90s or what was it of uh, the dorsal fin or the fin and of uh, of allegedly a Loch Ness? If you remember yeah. that, I do, and yeah. they're like, No, nah, that's not what it is. And I'm like, What the hell? It's not. What else could it be? Because it, it swung by like the camera, me. allegedly. It, yeah, I mean, that that did look. Oh. That did look uh, look, like, look uh, like the flipper. 
That's right, yeah. So, yeah, Robert Wilson. Thank you, Samantha. Robert um, Wilson. But, of course, you know what's up there, don't you? What's the that? Famous, the famous haunted building that um, Alistair Crowley owned. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, there were people wanting to buy that place. Uh, I think uh, there's some, uh, I did uh, a rock star buy it. That I'm not for sure. I We did a show on him uh, and his little following yeah. uh, a few months yeah. ago. Yeah. But anyway, so the, there's that up there. But so do you wonder whether people purposely go to these areas because there is something there? You know what I mean? Like yes, the 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 monster in the lake. There's also been a lot of lights around, you know, seen around that area as well. So yes, uh, so that is just one, you know, one place that uh, you know you, you could talk about and about uh, again, you know, sort of like where the strange things um, again. You know, the, there's talk about seeing um, dogmen, you know, uh, and like werewolf type uh, up there, you know, also. Uh, so if you, you know, you come back a little bit further down, um, you know, the, there's quite a lot of strange, you know, places where there's a lot of activity. Yeah, Samantha just said it was microwave transit and heating theory is the explanation of the explosion of the nodes no, and the, and the wheat it. inside yeah. the crop circuit. And that that is correct. Yeah. That's 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 how they actually determine if it was man made or yeah, extraterrestrial, I guess you can say, or artificial or not artificial, but not man made, I guess. Yeah. So N natural. Right. Naturally, um, like I said, I've, I've got a lot of pictures of uh, when I went on my first crop circle some years ago. Um, and then we had them in areas because they're not always in Wiltshire, you know, sort of like they're, they're scattered all around the UK. And uh, we'd been to uh, Sandon Castle uh, near Wakefield. And there's like the remains of a castle. And uh, in that area, you know, sort of like we had this um, crop circle. Now, uh, in this in this one, um, there was a place, and what happened was when we went across, there'd been a lot of UFO reports around uh, this area where um, I'm in these pictures with the crop circles. So, um, you know, it, it's like, wow. You know, daytime, these um, three UFOs had, had been seen over a building, and then all of a sudden, there's crop circles, you know? So, you know, it, uh, it just makes you wonder sometimes. There's a lot of things, a lot of different things. Um, we're also uh, talking about ley lines, and a lot of these areas have these invisible lines running through. And if you have a look, you know, on maps, I think uh, the, the running line with um, old Roman forts and what have you, um, with churches, because churches are usually built on the top of some other sort of like cultures, um area of you know where they had people buried in their religion before us but um you know sort of like before we came christianity and what have you roman celtic um beaker people and then the what you call the brigantes you know sort of like um that were here before sort of thing so a lot of these areas you know, sort of like um, where I've been, I, I found, and I found this as well, which is a, a bit sort of like uh, 
it, it takes me back a bit because some of these areas where there has been like stone little um stone circles right um there's been standing stones and what had happened in the 70s when they started building they started knocking and pulling it up a lot of the really? stones you know sort of like and just getting rid of them and i've actually um i i, I give a book to a friend uh which i've got years ago and it showed you an area in bingley where they just built these new flats i think i've spoken about this and it showed you the standing stones before the actual buildings were built and then they're just gone and they probably used the stone you know like for making brand new houses you know the other thing what we uh, came across have you heard of celtic heads no right again in this area where where i'd been ab abducted and, and what have you uh, a gentleman found in his garden this um head his skull and i th th this is in one place because there's a couple of places i've come across this and it's um a tradition to to bury you know the dead you know so right. like and so sometimes they're like a severed head you know sort of really? like a, a, a tradition with celts and what have you and if you dig any of these up whether the the actual um skeleton the skull or the stone skeletons uh, the stone skull believe me you can set things off really oh yeah yeah um i think one guy he just moved into an house and bad luck that that you know what i mean that's that's all i'll say just total bad luck well let me ask you this why is it uh uk has all these um uh more you more ufo reports than everybody else why i don't know um you got well, a lot more it seems like a lot more activity than most people well at one time i used to be on the ball and we used to get a lot of reports coming in now um what happened basically i i got a bit because becoming ill and one thing or another, what I decided to do is come away and I'm still interested in the reports. But the thing is, I was actually filming these things and a couple of friends out filming as well. So the thing is, people can claim, I've seen something and it claims this place is a hotspot. Now, let me tell you about hotspots right and ufo capitals the change right yeah because what will happen is an area will have a lot of sightings just like round here just like in bradford and other places you know sort of like down south up north in scotland and in wales and what will happen is you'll get a cluster of reports you'll get a heck of a lot of reports and what happens then is um there might be one place and then in a few months or six months later you'll get them in another area right and right. you'll get them somewhere else now if you've got somebody that's good with media they can tell people oh there's been a lot here some person might just be gathering reports and not go to the media uh, some people might, you know, sort of like just again, just might be just for their own personal gathering and not tell anybody. Um, so 
what happens is the next year you'll get another area becomes prominent and then somewhere else will and so now over the years over the years what will happen is sometimes these areas what were hot spots originally you know like maybe 10 years 15 years before all of a sudden they'll start up again so you know it's not there's one place only that's um having hot spots and a ufo capital because they move around, because these things move around. But sometimes they come back. And then sometimes people like myself think, oh, you know, rather than, you know, sort of like sitting and listening to people and, you know, sort of like, I'll get out and film. So then, of course, what's better than actually capturing things for a UFO report, if and if you're capturing quite a lot, that's quite a lot of reports that you've gathered in a way, because you've got the report. Um, if it's if it's right and it's time coded, you know, sort of like well, it shall have to set, sort mine out again after it to uh, pat battery run down, and uh, so um, you know you've got time coded images, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, as good as a report it's your own personal my own personal report anyway and you've got it there and sort of like no matter what it's a report as such and it's it's valid because it's there now that's my way now of of i suppose reporting you know sort of like there's your evidence you want there people always want to say you know i remember some years ago i was talking and, and I, i've said and i filmed this and my friend had his binoculars no uh, yeah he had his binoculars did tom and um I, I looked to him and you know i could see by his face and he went and grabbed these binocs and he's looking and he had a better camera than me at the time and i'm thinking so this chap he says uh oh well um why didn't you use binoculars? And I thought to myself, and I just said, well, I said, if I used binoculars, you won't be looking at the image. And this stood up and she, she shouts, how rude are you? And I thought to myself, what? I've just answered a valid question with a valid answer you know sort of like yeah why didn't i well you know why because you're watching the the flying man come down right yeah and i'm thinking to myself are you just here to cause trouble girl is he here sort of like what, what was it was he being serious you know, now, I mean, ex now explain to people what the flying man is, in case if they don't know. It's um, a film I took in 2000, back in uh, West Yorkshire, Bradford, a place called Queensbury. And basically, I was at a friend's home, and there'd been a lot of reports around that area. And we'd been traveling and we'd seen things ourselves um and there were flying triangles coming over on a night i mean i'll tell you what there is there's an aircraft that comes over on a night time and it looks like a flying triangle and it purposely comes over looking like a flying triangle and it's an old propeller driven aircraft and it's big and it comes are, you, are, you, are you talking like the German one like they had back in World War II that they were trying to develop? No, I'm talking about one of our aircraft. It, it, it was just like, I think it was just like a, a, a prop, um, you know, twin prop aircraft. Right. You, you couldn't tell because it was pitch black and I put my, my night vision on it and I filmed it and you can see, oh, yeah, I can see what it is. And then a police helicopter turned up, right? Yeah, um, I've got the video of that somewhere. 
Um, but anyway, I'm filming because all this is going on. I'd gone up to my friends and I, I was showing him this piece of new technology wasted on me. And I'm saying, oh, it said that there's this, I, I think it was, um, I think it was, it were either seven or nine, I think it was, satellites. It was um, a new, uh, what do you call it? Um, I think it, a, a Garmin, you know, it, it basically satellite navigation system, right? And it was wasted on me. And um, I'm looking, I said, oh, it says that there's, you know, these satellites above, which is picking up the information for it to, to work to tell you where you are, right, yeah? And <laughs> as I'm saying that and looking up, this thing is coming over above us. And I looks over and I'm opening the car, the back of the car now with all my equipment in. And I'm looking to say, have you seen? And I don't even have to ask him. I can see his face. The next thing, he goes through the door. And um, what happens is I pull my camera out and puts the battery in, messing about as usual. Oh, you know when you start messing about and all of it, you're panicking. And all of a sudden, you're making more problems. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, and I can't get the battery in. Slow down, put the battery in, turn it straight on, and and put the camera up. And I'm looking at this object now. It's just gone across, and now it's coming down. And it looks now like something falling, like an ejector seat, like that. And it goes behind the fence like this, you know, your backdrop, um, a chain fence. It, in a distance, and it, it it looks like a flying man. Some people say it looks like an ejector seat, but we did the triangulation, and if it were an ejector seat, it'd have to be something like 70 foot long. Um, wow. By, yeah, by uh, 38, 38 foot wide or something, um, 40 foot wide. You know what I mean? So I went looking for it, later on that night because he said come on we'll have a look so we had a look at the object so we had to plug it back then not not like now where sd cards you know what i mean sort of like plugged it in to his television and we were sat and we just could not believe his eyes i mean i were looking as well for where it had come down so he says don't go out russ and he had a, a real bad feeling about this so we sat and we had a coffee and we were looking and, and I'm sort of, I'm wanting to get off. I'm really wanting to get off and uh, set off home later on. And uh, I had two hour missing time. Wow. And, and if you remember, I showed you the photographs of that area where I'd right. taken. So, to, so that I think it was the next day, the next day, a day later, I'd gone out to this area and I'd taken the camera filming video camera and the camera taking shots. And I found two things. I showed them you've got like in that area. I don't know what it is. Um, and then there's a black flying triangle, you know, sort of like uh, in the distance in the same area where that object had landed, where we presume it had landed. Then, then what happened, when I went back um, that day, um, back to see my friend Tony and what have you, um, he said, you know, come in, put kettle on and what have you, made us a coffee and we sat talking, because we'd been talking about things that had been seen, like that um, pterodactyl, if you remember. We spoke about the, yes. the, the neighbours had seen this pterodactyl. And he said the neighbours had uh, been across. He says, and they were telling me that a white helicopter landed at the top field and it had NASA on the side. See, that's crazy. 
so um I've, I've been now i'm changing this this room this office and i'm putting the maps back up so i'm going to be putting some of the maps back up um where these are pinpointed you know where the ufo was seen and where the um the helicopter landed you know like um said nasa on the side you know um yeah so that was a flying man that was a flying man and a very strange very strange case you know he's uh, one of my favorite uh you know one of my, my favorite clips is that to be quite honest because wow, no matter what anybody says it is clear the problem is when i zoom when i start zooming in and getting too close it starts going it's like it's almost like there's something a force field around it you know because you can watch it and you can see it come down and it's clear you know but you're just not sure what it is some people think it i've had uh, somebody contact us think it's a dolphin a dolphin in the sky again you know the one I filmed the dolphin? Yeah. In Scarborough. I've had a, a message. Do you think it's a dolphin, Russ? It looks to me like a dolphin. Wow. Do you know why it looks like a dolphin? When it comes down? Because it looks like a dolphin. Now, think you know, thinking about this, right? Yeah. Somebody else, somebody else um, has said that they think it looks like, you know, if you get a telephone receiver. Right. If you, if you get your telephone receiver, and you turn it at an angle. Right. Yeah. It looks like. It just looks like a receiver. Well, it looks like a receiver would look like. But also, what does it look like? Even when you do that, it looks like somebody's trying to make a dolphin shape in the sky. Now, I'm finding this quite bizarre, to be quite honest. But what I'm going to do, right, yeah, because um, on the other computer... Um, I saved the images of it when it came down. Now I'll send them across. You can you you know what I mean and see what you think. But again, it, it's like, you know, what is it? Just what is it? It didn't look like a dolphin when it went overhead. When it went across, it looked like a, a right funny type of triangle, and it was two tone. I couldn't say whether it was silver and white or white and silver. If you know what I mean, it was two-tone. But then again, having said that, I looked. The next thing, I'm opening the car door, you know, the back of the car, you know, the, the door at the back, the boot, and getting my gear out. And what have you putting that back in because that was expensive. I thought, better put that in first when I get the camera out. You know what I mean? close the door and uh, start filming. Now, you know, sort of like, I only had a, a glimpse of it like that when I'm talking to Tony, you know, like saying, you know, like there's these satellites above and yeah, you've seen it. All right. You know what I mean? And it was sort of like panicking, trying to get that sorted out, battery in and what have you, and, and take a, and then it was straight across, and then it was coming banking and coming down. And it was some distance. It was some distance, I'll tell you now. You know, sort of like when it came over over us, it wasn't that fast. It didn't seem to be that fast. But once I'd been in the car, got the, the what do you call it out? And it would only, it wasn't minutes or anything. You know what I mean? Right. It might have been nearly, you know, maybe so many seconds you know sort of like 
it should not have been over there and banking and coming down which led me to to the belief that you know could it have been you know sort of like um had something hit it you know sort of like um, had it been attacked by whatever in our airspace you, you know what i mean yeah because so, you wasn't too far from water though was you from there yeah yeah well, yeah, he was. He was a good ways from water, or he wasn't. I was um, quite away from from water. Um, that's when I lived in in um, West Yorkshire, and you, you're looking at sort of like you're looking at least seventy miles east, seventy miles west, at least to to get to any water. I well, see. That's not far from us. For us, I mean, no, no, you know, so. But what we do have reservoirs. Oh, do you? Oh yeah. Now this is something that keeps on coming up because, in a famous case, when a, a flying saucer was being chased, what did it do? It flew. Right, yeah, and it stopped and zoom. In the what what I'm saying stopped, it went zoom, boom into a lake. Oh, and the wow. jet fighters went straight past it. Jet fighters went straight past it. And it had gone in the lake. You know, then the jet fighters had flown past them, what have you. And um, a few minutes later, it came back out. You know, so these these catchment areas, these you know, um, lakes, uh, sometimes they come down in reservoirs as well. Have you heard of that? Yes, I have. I went to see. You see, I worked for um, a water company. And I'd gone over to see about one that uh, had landed near this uh, this reservoir. And did I get a talking to the next day? Well, these guys turned up and they were told, to, you know, go to the boss's office. And yeah, okay, then I usually were in his office. Um, we were first in, first out on the morning. Um, get his equipment and we were off you know sort of like uh, and this time my boss wasn't there it, it, it was but it, what he'd done was he'd gone out and uh, these two guys were there and uh, said oh you know like the uh, ear that he was at this place, you know, like the overnight, this uh, this uh, area where this uh, craft had come down. Famous case, actually. And I says, uh, I said, well, I were over, yeah, just looking around, well, what are you looking for? I said, oh, we'd heard that something had come, nothing came down. Before I could even say it, nothing came down. And uh, then my boss came in, like, and he uh, he sat down, and uh, he said, "Well, what do you think?" He says, uh, and he says, uh, "Well, what to?" And he said, "Well, he's, he said that yeah, he's been over there." And I said, "Well, I says uh, there's no gates or anything, you know." I said, "You just walk in," and he says, "Your employer, you don't walk in, you know." Like, and I said, "Well." It's open to the public. So, well, what are you doing at that time going, you know what I mean? Because, uh, yeah, at a reasonable time, but, you know, you weren't, you know, we're really late, wasn't it? And sort of like, well, yeah, it was, you know, sort of like 12 o'clock at night, you know what I mean? Not a lot you can see either, at anyway, so, you know, 
my boss, I, I could tell he wasn't happy, you know what I mean? I wasn't happy either. You know what I mean? So, you know, I was told, you know, like to not go around and sort of like, uh, you know, I said, well, it's, it's public property. So I'm, I'm just digging myself in deeper. But anyway, um, you know, it would seem to me, you know, that uh, something, That would be that. Yeah, so, um, you know, it were like a public property, but, you know, you work for us, keep out. You know, you know what I mean? Wow. So, you know, I didn't uh, didn't go back, actually. You know? So it just it makes you wonder, you know, sort of like, are these things, are they, when they're being chased, are they purposely making for water? To hide, you know. I've heard people say they're using water for energy source. You know, but personally, I think it's just to to basically hide. You know, like in in these areas, and then wait until jets have flown by. You know, sort of like, and then sort of like, come out and go in opposite direction. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Oh, you can say that again, Chris. It really is, mate. That's crazy. You know? <laughs> it That's just wild. makes you wonder, doesn't it? You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. But how many, how many more times does this happen? Oh, there's no telling that how many times this happens that we don't even know about. Yeah. No, because the other funny thing is. I told you about uh, the two balls of light uh, I call Tom and Jerry, right? Now, this this specific night, there were two balls of light seen, and it was um, the 2nd of February, 1998. Never forget the night. We had the most ever UFO reports come in for one day. And I think we had, I think we had uh, 80, 88 UFO reports for that one night, you know, for that day. Right. And again, it were two lights moving, diffuse lights. Now, some people say, again, that some sometimes these lights were like strobing. You could see through a camera, a video camera with night vision, you could see him strobing. But people said when the, when they were looking at them that there were just two, like, um, bright lights moving. So looking through video cameras with night vision and looking with the naked eye, you were seeing two objects, but... You got a different opinion, you know. You you got uh, you know sort of like with naked eye, it was just like two lights, and no strobing, night vision strobing, and uh, again, we had some very strange things where two ladies were talking about what they'd seen on the, that night and what they've drawn, and what they told us. And what they saw is something out of a science fiction book. And the other thing is, both of the ladies were um, a couple of miles away from each other. And they were talking about being inside a craft. They didn't actually say it as such, but the drew. 
inside a craft and this person stood at this console right yeah now the problem is you know you're talking to two pensioners and very strange because i'm thinking but you've drawn the inside of a you've drawn the inside you know you must you <laughs> You must have been inside to draw the inside. Oh, I never right. thought of that. Right. Thought of that. Do you see? Very bizarre. So this other, this uh, uh, again, a lady had called, and uh, she told me where she lived in this area, near a famous wood where I once camped in. And I'll never camp in that wood again. Well, me, my friend, and um, his cousin, and uh, four other lasses with these tents. And I'm not joking. I was scared stiff. My mate was scared stiff. We packed up the tent. The lasses left their tent. They didn't pack it up and we got out of there. Because there were dogs and like cats' heads hanging on, like, um, what do you call it, fishing wire. Oh, wow. And we'd heard these, you know, around and what have you. And we said, shh. And I, I was panic stricken, honestly. I could not believe it. And I, I said to my friend, you know, sort of like, I think we better get out of here, you know. And he says, you know, yeah, I think you're right. So, but it's, oh, but it's my new tent. I said, well, you pick it, you pack it up then. You know what I mean? <laughs> you want to take it, you, oh, help us. You better help us. So I'm messing about with his tent and I'm saying, come on. And we got out of that area right fast. Anyway, um, a bit further down is this area. Uh, there's like a new housing estate. And next to that is like um, an old farm building. And there's like this man-made lake. And the lady says that the two balls of light came down into the lake and then took off again. So yeah, that's crazy. Why did it do that? And then this had been seen all over West Yorkshire. Um, it had, um, and it went over uh, east, and it was seen back up. Um, I think as far up in uh, Newcastle, somewhere. I think uh, if I remember rightly, you know, like with the reports. It'd been seen, you know, a good hundred miles at least, which is for us going from there, hundred miles, you're going to the, you know, out to the coast and out to sea, you know, and back out to sea over there on the east is, is here. And that's where it were heading, you know, sort of like, uh, so, you know, so many reports, 80, oh, 88 reports. I've got them here, I can show you. Later on, when we're off air, I can show you. Because personal details, you know, like... Um, but some of the drawings as well of what uh, was seen, you just would not, you would not believe it, you know. But what I've done is I've, I've, I've copied, I've done my impression, artist's impression, of what was seen you know not as good as a per you know not as good as a person that's sat down and done it because you always get people that, oh well i'm not an artist you don't have to be just just draw what you saw sketch what you saw you don't have to be a you know picasso or whatever or rembrandt or whatever right know? right just right just show us you know like put it down as you've seen it as you saw it yourself amazing you know, 
But I've got a few people that have and some spectacular craft which look like they've come from some kind of scientific uh, show or some you know motion picture you know That's so wild. like with informa information you know about things spinning around one way and um, a, an object in the center of the craft spinning the opposite direction and these tail fins that come out and just amazing you know sort of like put a better time into it you know we've got things like that as as well you know but uh but to to put somebody's hands and the head as if you how was you were you were you were they sat down were you looking above them over them you've got to have been and the thing is both of the women drill the same thing yeah that's wild very different you know one more round console one more square but all buttons on and and these hands and there's other things and i'm always looking for people that get in touch to report things i'm always looking to see if any information that's similar that fits in you know chris right so yeah that is that's uh, awesome well, I, I think it is, you know, myself. But uh, there's a lot of why, you know, the thing is why? Because because it's happening and people are reporting. In fact, people are reporting more now than ever before. And in spite of um, silly people on TV, you know, they'll, you'll always get when you're going on a show, um, for instance, if you're going on a, a TV program or on a news program, they've always got to put some spooky or X files. Now I know we put stuff on and what have you for our shows and stuff, but the way they do it, it's like, and they always say the same thing. Are you looking for green men, Russell? No. Do you know any? And it's always do 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 do. You know what I mean? Or, you know, UFO, uh, what do you call it? Um, X Files will play, X, do, 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 you know what I mean? Sort of thing. And sort of like, and they say, oh, do you like that, Russ? No. Sorry, I must have missed something. What? You know, <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry, I must have. You know, but the, but the way they do it, it's not because it's us, you know, that have an understanding that reporting that are actually uh you know letting people know what's going on this is more of a tongue-in-cheek taking the you know out of us taking the mickey out of us which is a different thing altogether you know what i mean it's like my mum used to say laugh with me not at me you know right. uh, right. but it, it's a case of it seems to be you know directed at sort of like mickey taking Although people just lately have done what I did. When I was asked to go on a show and there was a poor chap talking and um, I think he had some uh, uh, problem. He said he had a problem with his health. Two people taking the mickey out of somebody is a form of bullying. To us, right. you know, like taking the mickey out of a, a young man who's obviously got a problem he, he says he has and you know taking the rise is more than bullying you know so when i was an ex person when they started with me i just turned around and said you know what the what what pair of prats the what and just put the phone down you know it would um you know a fairly um well-known show but i don't have to go on shows like that where you know you, you, you're taking people taking the mickey out of people and sort of like being nasty and bullying i don't want to be associated with that so right best thing i just said bye and put the phone down you know and apparently that's happened again last week on a big show where somebody um said something to somebody 
um, a UFO investigator, and he just turned around and said, sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, oh no, I can't, and just put the phone down. Everybody apparently is saying that they knew what he'd done and why he'd done it, you know, sort of like, and people, like, do we have to put up with this? No, we don't. I'm not so hard up for, you know, sort of like uh, getting out there and sort of like uh, promotion and what have you to be made a fool of, you know what I mean? Right. It's right. like now, especially with the internet now, you know, they're struggling. These people on prime time TV shows are struggling for the simple reason you go to a show where people are not going to be ruled. You know, they're going to ask questions. Okay, you can have a bit of fun. And I, I, nobody likes to have fun and a laugh more than me. But when you start being nasty to people, and especially people that seem to maybe have a, some kind of a, an illness, that's when I'm afraid, you know, sort of like, that's not entertainment. You know what I mean? Right. And bullying at its worst. So, like I say, this is why shows now, like yours, again, I was watching you last night. Amazing. There were so many questions I wanted to ask. But I was yeah, just. Yeah, we've got listen. another one coming up in a few minutes, too. I would just listen. I'll be listening. When, when I go off, I'll have to go spend a penny and take a painkiller and I'll be watching you. Yeah, um, we're getting ready to go live in about 15 minutes. But I wanted to ask um, a question, uh, uh, yeah. if it's all right. Absolutely. Um, I know that, uh, you know, sort of like, the, the lady seemed to be sat on the fence a bit, right? Um, and, you know, like, a lot of the questions, no, we don't know about that, and I work for the... Um, what do you call it, company, over there? Uh, is it National Park? Uh -huh. Is it? Now, the thing that I always, this is what I always think, and this is just my opinion, is that, you know, when you're working in an office and you're working side by side, maybe the police or National Park or whatever, do you think that when they know that you're looking into this and you're, you're talking on shows and what have you, do you think they're going to be letting you know? Do you, do you think they're going to be all lovey-dovey with you? No. Really? No. And sort of like let you know what's going on? No. 100%? No. Because I I don't think, you know, obviously doing a good job. And so oh, I, I, I've never heard. Well, there's a reason for that. And that's because they don't want you to know. Yes. And, I mean, the fact is, you know, sort of like she's on your program talking because of all the things that are going on and people that are reporting. Um, there's another factor as well with, with this. And this is, and whether they like it or not, and this is the truth, I've had a pretty good rapport, um, rapport with um, people over the years because I don't give people's names, addresses out and details. I always say, I'll give you their details you know like in the media if you want to get in touch with them you can do so right but beware because you know sort of like you, you might get sort of like verbally attacked you might even get attacked you just don't know it happens and believe me i know it happens now the thing is you know sort of like a, a lot of the journalists uh, well, how comes out being in touch with us? Your journalists. Sometimes you can be bloody hard work. You know, sort of like it's all right. They can. It's a double-edged sword. They can be nice and they can cut you next, and it's always allegedly. And I always say to them, right. "Why don't you say allegedly when you've got some?" someone in politics coming and talking BS. Why don't you say to them, allegedly? I'm going to do gonna... this. Allegedly, you're going to do... You know, why don't they say that? They can't say it to us. You know what I mean? Why don't they say it to, you know, people... 
if anybody's got a right to ask and say allegedly to people, it's people in politics, believe me. You know, I think we all right. know. But you know what I'm saying? And the truth of the matter is, you know, they don't like it. Well, because I don't, you know, sort of like uh, give people's details and they're very wary. You know, sort of like some people will go running, you know, sort of like they'll make out up and they'll go talk to, to anybody in media. You know what I mean? But if seriously, if, if people, you know, sort of like have something and, and what have you, they think twice. You know, I've been sent a few things and I say to them, you know, it's good. I'm not sure what it is, but, you know, sort of like, and I think people, have, because they see me in the paper a lot, and they're thinking, oh, well, um, can we get in? Well, if you've got something interesting, why not? And you're showing me it. Well, there's only one way, and that is I can, like I've said, I can give you their details. If you want to get in touch with them, do so. To promote right. them, the next person. So that's what I do. I, I, I used to do it a lot. Now I'm a firm believer of it, you know. But it's been a great show. But I do got to run because right. <laughs> we got another another show in less than I know, eight minutes. I know. I'll be watching. Like I say, I'll be down in a bit. All right, great show, and ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you shortly. Bye. Take care, Cheers. everybody. Bye. Yes, Chris. Bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>